Hello, my name is Frederick Bushman. I'm a professor at the, of microbiology at the University of Pennsylvania. At, for the NHF meeting, I was given the title AAV Integration Summary and Implications. So in AAV vectors, there are no viral encoded proteins that carry out integration of AAV DNA into host cell DNA. Uh, that's in contrast to lentiviruses, retroviruses, where there are virus-encoded integrase proteins that carry out that job, and similarly for gene transfer vectors. No such thing for AAV. So AAV goes into cells, and it, the DNA of AAV vectors can become integrated, but carried out by cellular enzymes. So the enzymes involved include both the homologous DNA recombination and non-homologous end-joining pathways. So that gets the AAV DNA integrated. Um, there are multiple examples of insertional mutagenesis and transformation with the retroviral and lentiviral vectors in humans. So far, there are no AAV integration-related adverse events in large mammals or in humans reported to date. However, in neonatal mice, AAV integration near the Rian locus uh, has been associated with hepatocellular carcinoma in some studies. Uh, this isn't prominent in adult mice, um, but they're now, uh, in very recent work, we've seen a number of further examples of um, transformation in neonatal mice with AAV. And so a few general conclusions seem to be that multiple treatments can predispose to insertional mutagenesis and hepatocellular carcinoma in mice. And that would include liver injury, uh, aspects of the background disease, treatment with toxic metabolites, or deliberately targeting integration of the vector at this sensitive Rian locus. So against this background, it was inter of interest to study uh, long-term gene therapy in a large vertebrate using AAV. So this was carried out with my colleague Denise Sabatino at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. The title of our study was a long-term study of AAV gene therapy in dogs with hemophilia A identifies clonal expansions of transduced liver cells. So nine dogs were treated for hemophilia, successful gene correction, there were no vector-associated adverse events. One thing we noticed, though, was uh, increasing expression of factor VIII over time in two of the dogs. And so that led us to want to look really carefully uh, using next-generation sequencing to catalog uh, AAV vector integration sites and the behavior of cell clones harboring integrated vectors. So to summarize, we did see some notable uh, expansion of cell clones with integrated um, vectors, AAV vectors, near cancer-associated genes. So this was seen in several of the dogs. We could see um, so, uh, a whole series of different integration events, some associated with notable clonal expansion. And of those, some did have integration near genes that uh, where the human homologs are known to be important in human cancer. For example, there was a notable expansion in a dog named Linus uh, at a gene called deleted in leukemia number two in, in humans. Also for some of these genes, we could see cl clusters of integration sites um, seen in multiple dogs uh, near the, some of these sensitive genes. So this really made it seem like uh, if you had an integration event, the cell might have been proliferating more or surviving better so that we caught it after the 10 years of gene therapy. However, it's important to say that there were no uh, clear morphological outgrowths of clumps of cells in the liver, in the liver nodules, and no adverse events in the dogs associated with uh, genotoxic integration. So uh, some conclusions from all this. In the dog study, we saw stable and sustained factor VIII expression for up to 10 years in a model of hemophilia A. We saw an increase in factor VIII activity over time in two of the nine dogs. A clonal expansion was observed with integrated AAV near cancer-associated genes, and the mechanisms by which these integrations uh, affected cell growth, if they did, are, are unknown. We didn't have more material that would allow us to do follow-up experiments. No dogs had evidence of tumor genesis or liver nodules, despite the expanded clones. So why did two dogs show an increasing uh, production of factor VIII over time? It was unclear, but the simplest model based on what we've seen may be that somewhere in liver that we didn't pick up, there's an expanding clone with an intact factor VIII gene, and that was delivering increasing amounts of factor VIII to circulation. Though, um, again, we didn't measure this directly. We're only guessing that this was 
probably the ex explanation. <clears throat> and then one other thing we noticed was that the great majority of AAV encoded transgenes are inactivated by mutation, actually. The, vir the viral vectors tend to rearrange very frequently. And so we think that offers an opportunity for optimization to try to suppress that and get more uh, uh, therapeutic gene production per vector copy. So stepping back, these data and the mouse data are consistent with a model in which AAV integration can cause insertional mutagenesis that promotes cell proliferation. However, to date, there are no adverse events in large animals or in humans. And so just to thank my collaborators, I want to thank Denise Sabatino, who led the work with the dogs uh, over the whole period of their therapy, and my, uh, the team who works in my core lab that does this kind of work. So thank you very much. Bye.